Well, good afternoon, Keswick. We're still here. We're still pleading with you to get right with God. The Bible uh, tells us to prepare to meet your God. Are you prepared to meet God? God? Oh, praise the Lord. God bless you. See, there's only one way to prepare to meet God. There's a myriad of religions out there and a, a myriad of gods, but only one true and living God, and that's the God of the Bible, the only God who exists. All other gods are what's called worthless idols. They don't exist except in the imaginations of men. And it doesn't matter how many people follow them, or how zealously and fervently they're worshipped, there's only one true living God, the God who created everything. This idea that the universe somehow created itself insults your intelligence. The Bible, you can read it for yourself right at the beginning. It says, in the beginning, when there was nothing, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. The God of the Bible is not a puny God, my friends. He has all power. All power. He has infinite power. Can you imagine such a being who has infinite power? Men and women would like that kind of power, wouldn't they? Boris Johnson would love infinite power. But only God, the God of the Bible, the only God who exists, he's the one who has infinite power. He spoke and this universe and everything in it came into being. That's how powerful the God of the Bible is. He's not a puny God who needs anything from any part of its crea his creation. And he not only spoke the universe into existence, he created everything that we see. And he made a man from the dust of the earth. He created a man, our first parents, a man and a woman. He created a man from the dust of the earth and then a woman from man's rib. That's not evolution, my friends. God created in six literal days. And on the sixth day, he made a man and a woman. And the man and woman, humankind, are the pinnacle of God's creation. So your life isn't worthless. Your life is meaningful. It's not meaningless. You don't have to live your life with no hope. God of the Bible, he created mankind in his image and likeness. Angels and archangels aren't created in God's image and likeness. No animal was created in God's image and likeness. Humankind are God's pinnacle of creation. That's the God of the Bible, the only God who exists. The one who spoke the universe into existence. The one who said, let there be light, and there was light. But mankind have gone their own way. The Bible, God's word tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Every single one of us has sinned enough already for God to cast us off when we die. To throw us into a lake of fire where we'll suffer unimaginable terror forever. And so that's why I'm here today. You say, you're a pest. You're spoiling my peace and quiet. I don't mind being a pest. If some of you are put in your right mind and saved from the coming wrath, I don't mind pestering you. One wise preacher said we should... If anyone ends up in hell, we should let them climb over our bodies to get there. And Paul, the murderer who was saved in the Bible, God saved a murderer, someone who used to murder even the people of God. He, he said, wherefore we know the terror of the Lord we persuade men. You see, God is an angry God. The Bible tells us that God is angry with the wicked every single day. God of the Bible, the only God who exists is a holy God. He's of purer eyes than to behold evil. And he's not looking the other way when you sin. He's not indifferent to your sin and your crimes against him. And all sin, he 
it doesn't matter what it is, all sin is against God. An, an infinitely holy God who's going to leave no stone unturned on the day of judgment. And so my concern for you today is where will you spend forever? My concern for you today is are your sins forgiven? Do you have a forgiveness that comes from God, the God of the Bible, the only God who exists? And are you forgiven His way? See, 2,000 years ago, God, the creator of all things, He entered His own creation. He was born of a virgin, a miracle birth, and He lived a sinless life, a life that you and I can't live. Jesus Christ is the only good person to ever walk the face of this planet. And the rest of us, the rest of us are just sinners in need of forgiveness. Even, yeah, it's true, you can read it in the Bible, my friend. I'm not here spouting my own opinion today. My own opinion is like yours, it means absolutely nothing. So, uh, well, you know, we're having a nice peaceful day till I started preaching. But you have no peace, all you have is a false peace. See, we've all sinned enough for God to give us what we deserve. And that's nothing good, my friends. You don't deserve anything good from God. None of us do. And all that's left, until you make preparation to meet God His way, all that's left is just a, a fearful expectation of judgment. Your prime concern today and every day that God lends you breath is having your sins forgiven. Are your sins forgiven? Are you prepared to meet God? See, because He knows it all. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. God is watching you, my friends. He knows all your secret sin. All of it. There's nothing hidden from the eyes of Him with whom we have to give an account. And that's why the Bible warns us it's a terrifying thing to stand before the one true living God. You're not going to stand before a big fluffy bunny on the day of judgment who's winking at your sin. You're not going to stand before some Santa Claus type figure who's just waiting to welcome you into his presence and give you nice things. That God doesn't exist. You say, well, I thought that God was a God of love. Yeah, God is love, but he's also a God of wrath, a God of justice. A holy God. A God who's a just judge and will do what's right on the day of judgment. And so when you stand before him, when you die at your appointed time, a day fixed by Almighty God, the God of the Bible, the only God who exists, when God takes your life, you'll stand before him and all your sin will be laid bare. There'll just be you and God and all of your sin on display. A lot of it. All of it. Nothing, it'll leave no stone unturned. And all your secret sin, everything that you've done in the dark, will be brought into the light on that day, my friends. So you can see your condition is not good. The Bible warns us that even from birth, we're enemies of God. We're under His wrath. We're conceived in sin. There are no good people. And it doesn't matter how many charitable deeds you do. You can give all your money away to charity and leave yourself penniless. Poor and penniless. And your sin remains. It doesn't pay for any of it. Not even one of your sins. And all of your religious exploits. Going to a church building putting money in the collection, confessing your sins to a priest, praying to Mary. That doesn't pay for your sin either. Fasting and praying, visiting Mecca, that doesn't pay for your sin. Knocking on doors, handing out the Watchtower magazine, that doesn't pay for your sin, my friends. See, God requires the shedding of blood for sin. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. And God, in His mercy and kindness, at a time He chose, He sent forth His Son, born of a woman, to 
redeem us from the curse of the law. You see, you've already sinned enough against God for him to give you what you deserve. To throw you into the lake of fire, that a place of unimaginable terror where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth forever. With no escape. If you're not prepared to meet God, the God of the Bible, that's the only God who exists. If you're not prepared to meet God today, my friends... Your current condition is that you're on the broad path that leads to destruction. A place of unimaginable terror, where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth forever. And no weekends off. My friends, if you end up in that place, and I sincerely hope you don't, when you die and stand before God, if He gives you justice for all your sin and throws you into a lake of fire, There'll be no comfort in that place. There won't be any, any comfort from having a, a huge bank balance and climbing the ladder of success in your chosen career path and gaining the accolade of men. None of that will matter on that day. If you end up in hell, my friends, all your money will be meaningless. There'll be no comfort from all the money that you've stored up in the bank. There'll be no comfort from all the people that you've slept with. You, can't, you won't be sitting in hell saying, well, I'm glad I slept with all those people. I'm glad I got my mortgage paid off. There's no comfort in hell, my friends. Think about it. It's a place where you'll suffer the vengeance of Almighty God day and night, forever and ever. And that's the God of the Bible because He's the only God who does exist. And in His mercy, see, God is merciful. God of the Bible. But he's not merciful to everyone. He's a just judge who will do what's right. If you fall under judgment on the day of judgment, when you stand before God, if you stand there without being forgiven, he'll give you justice. He'll leave no stone unturned. And you'll suffer his wrath forever. But he's a merciful God and he offers you mercy today. He very kindly sent you a preacher today so that you can hear the word of God and faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The word of God is the Bible. That's the only word of God there is. The Watchtower magazine is not the word of God. What the Pope in Rome says, that's not the word of God. The Quran, that's not the word of God. All scripture, that's the, from Genesis to Revelation, 66 books written by over 40 different authors. That's the word of God. Men and women in his, through history, men and women throughout history have given their lives so that we can read the word of God today freely and come to a knowledge of who he is, of how holy he is, and where we'll spend forever. The Bible tells us that God killed his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him will not perish. Some people are going to perish, my friends. Don't let it be you. But we'll have everlasting life. Now, that's probably one of the most famous verses in the Bible, in God's word. John 3:16. You can read it for yourself. But it tells us that God killed his own son on that cross. See, Jesus Christ said, nobody takes my life. I have power. I, nobody takes my life. I lay it down freely and I have power to take it up again. That's what Jesus Christ said. So when he died on that cross, it wasn't an accident, my friends. And wicked men didn't get one over on him. This is God, your creator, the one who knit you together in your mother's womb and gave you life at a time of his free will determining. You see, the God of the Bible is not a puny God. He's a God who created light out of darkness. And he didn't create everything and then walk away and leave it to its own devices. The God of the Bible is sovereign. He's not only all-powerful, and he's not, not only has infinite power and infinite knowledge, He's a God who knows the end of time from the beginning of time. And not because he looks through some kind of crystal ball just to see what's going to happen. 
God of the Bible, he decrees every single thing that comes to pass. The God of the Bible, the only God who exists, he has a plan, a decree, from the beginning of time until the end of time, until he says, that's the end. Sorry? Well, you, you know, you, you can, we can talk about that if you like. We're here to be talked to, we're here to be reasoned with. The Bible says, come, let us reason together. You see, we have the truth today. That's why we're able to stand up and declare it boldly, knowing that the gospel, the preached message of this, the good news of what God has done, is the very power of God. God could save you in spite of your hatred of him. You say, well, I, I don't hate God. Well, the Bible says otherwise. The Bible says that we're at enmity to God. We're opposed to him in our inner being. We, we hate the God of the Bible. We're all born enemies of God. There are no good people. Jesus Christ said, there are none that are good. There's none that seeks after God. And so you can imagine being the enemy, the object of God's wrath. How precarious that is. You don't want to die in that state, my friends. You don't want to die an enemy of God. And you don't have to. The God of the Bible has been very merciful and kind to provide a way of escape. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? There's only one way that a human being can be made right before God. All your church attendance doesn't pay for your sin. Baptism, confirmation, being a church warden, or some other task, performing some other task in a church, that doesn't pay for one of your sins. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. God requires a blood sacrifice for sin. And he provided a lamb. The lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world forever. Jesus Christ is your only hope today, my friends. Is the only sacrifice that's on offer that can pay for your sin. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him, through Jesus Christ, the world might be saved. Whoever believes is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already. See, God has been very merciful and kind to you today. You're still here. You still have life. The virus hasn't taken your life yet. God hasn't took your life yet. He hasn't. He's given you all you need. He's provided everything that you have today. Your employment, the food in your stomach, your families and friends, children. God provides every good thing that we have. Every good gift comes down from God, the God of the Bible. The one who doesn't change. See, the God of the Bible is not only omnipotent, he has all power. The God of the Bible has infinite power, infinite knowledge. He's also sovereign. He does whatever he pleases. Our God is in the heavens. He does all that he pleases. So everything that happens in this universe is working out perfectly according to what God has decreed. The world might seem to us as though it's falling apart. Hello. But it's actually falling into place. Everything's working Hi. out perfectly towards a glorious end that you can read about in the Bible. The last book of the Bible, Revelation, God has told us what's going to happen. When he, when he destroys this world, this world is, a, is only transient, my friends. This world is fading away. It's not going to last forever. Hello, my friend. Can you turn the sound down a bit? I'm trying to have a drink here. Okay. Well, there's something more important than your no, peace and quiet. The sound down. No. But thanks for asking. I care about your soul, my friend. I don't want to see you end up in hell. You know, that's far more important than your peace and quiet. In fact, you have no peace and quiet. All you have is a false peace. And all that's left is just a fearful, terrifying expectation of judgment. See, if I, I'm your best friend today. If I didn't care for your soul, I'd stay at home and keep this wonderful truth that I have 
to myself. But that wouldn't be living, would it? I live my neighbor as I live myself. So I want to see them put in the right mind, my neighbors. I want to see my fellow human kind saved from the wrath to come. Because God is angry. And his wrath, his anger is upon you at this moment in time if you're outside of Christ. Sorry? Did you get, did you get the sign in? Would you like to take a picture of the sign? I'd like you to get the sign in. Are you possible? No, I don't, what do I want the sign for? I, I want you to sign. have the sign. I want you to you read. On the benches, I it? want you to read the word of God. Thank Thanks for taking a picture. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, there's something far more important than your high score on Candy Crush. Put down Candy Crush. Yeah, you have your conversation. I'm not spoiling your conversation. I hope you enjoy your conversation. Yeah, I'm, I won't be much longer. Yeah. Most of you, I can't, I can't hear, my friend. I can't hear. You have to speak up. Yeah, yeah, that'll be a good idea. Yeah, go get your own microphone. That'd be good. Yeah, that's that's right. That's the only way. That's the only way to praise Jesus. But friends, please consider your eternal destiny because it's far more important than anything else in this world. The Bible tells us that it's appointed for us to die once. Nobody gets a second chance after death. Nobody comes back as a pig or a fly reincarnated as, a, as something else. Reincarnation doesn't exist. There's no second chance, my friend. The Bible tells us that we'll die once, every single one of us, and stand before a holy, righteous and just God. And that's why the Bible warns us it's a terrifying thing to stand before God. See, the God of the Bible is not going to leave any stone unturned when we stand before Him. God is holy. He's a God of love, but He's also a God of wrath. A just judge who will do what's right. You see, God is not a corrupt judge. You can't bribe God. You might be able to bribe a judge. If you have um, a few quid that you can bribe him with, you might be able to tempt him and get off with your crimes. You know, that can happen. Well, you, you know, if you stand before a judge, you give him a nod and a wink or a funny handshake, you might be able to, you know, get off with your crimes if you're in the right lodge. But you can't bribe God, my friends, and your mates down the Freemasons Lodge, no matter how much they pat you on the back, won't be there to, st to speak up for you when you stand before God. When you stand before God, and it's when, not if. And that's the God of the Bible because he's the only God who exists. When you stand before Almighty God, when God takes your life, calls you to himself, all of your sin will be on display. Even the secret sins that you think that you've gotten away with. That you think no one else knows about. The eyes of the Lord, the eyes of the God of the Bible are in every place. Behold in the evil and the good. God is watching you, my friends, and he knows it all. And everything that you've done in the dark, in secret, will be brought into the light on that day. So you can see why it's such a terrifying thing to stand before him. He knows it all. And your mouth will be stopped. But there's a better way, my friends. You don't have to stand before an angry God. You can meet God as your father and not your judge. You can stand before a God who, who welcomes you into his presence when you die. You see, when Jesus Christ... What's that? Yeah, I, 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 Thank you. That's very, that's very kind of you, my friend. That's very, very kind. Thank you. I pr I appreciate your concern. I, I, I can tell it's heartfelt. You can see it in his face, can't you? I can't. Yeah, he's very, he's very sincere and genuine in his concern for me. But since, since I couldn't care less about men's concern, or I'm not promoting myself. 
I just want to see you put in your right mind and living for something greater than this world. I want to see you prepare to meet your God, His way. Because your, your own way, your own way is the way of death. It's a good job women can't preach. <laughs> it's a good job God doesn't call women to preach, that's all I can say. <laughs> God doesn't call women to preach, by the way. If you've got a woman who's preaching in a pulpit, she's in rebellion. A woman is not to preach or teach. You can read it in God's Word. God only calls men to preach. Sorry? Because it says he. You can read it in the Bible. You say, have you read the Bible? That's good. Well, you should know where it says that a woman isn't to preach. See, this idea that we're... You're a very, very selfish man. We don't want to listen to you all the time. Thank you for your very, opinion, sir. Very, very selfish. Thank you for your opinion. Do you live in Cumbria? Do you live in Cumbria, sir? Do you? Oh, that's nice. You don't, don't sound as though you're from Cumbria. Yeah, if I was selfish, I would stay at home. If I was selfish, I wouldn't tell you this good news, how you can be saved from the wrath of God. If I was selfish, I wouldn't love you enough to warn you to flee from the wrath to come. You see, and your only way of escape is what God has provided. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. Did you know that? You could be the most religious person in Keswick. You could be the most religious person on the face of this planet and still remain an enemy of God and stand before him condemned because of your, all your sin. God has provided a way for us to be forgiven and it's only through the cross of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. This idea that there's many paths to God, that all religions are valid. You just, you know, you make your own way there. As long as you're a good Muslim, or a good Hindu, or a good Roman Catholic, you can please God. That's a lie from the very pit of hell. God killed his son on that cross. The Bible tells us that he pleased God to crush him. How can there be any other way to peace with God? If you could get to heaven any other way, why did Jesus Christ die on that cross? You see, what he was doing on that cross, when he willingly laid down his life as a sacrifice for the sins of his people, he was dying in his people's place and suffering the wrath of Almighty God in his people's place. And he cried out, it's finished, paid in full, he did it all on that cross. And that's why your church attendance can't help you. That's why your charitable giving doesn't pay for your sin. And when Jesus said, it's finished, he laid down his life. Willingly he laid down his life. He was buried three days later, resurrected, brought back from the dead, and was seen by over 500 eyewitnesses. No other religious leader has ever defeated death, have they? Hello. Well, that's very, very, you know, we respect people here in Cumbria. Are you, have you just come here for the day? Are you just here for the day? Yeah, you, you know, using foul language like that doesn't get, gain you any respect, my friend. And that's, that shows the heart of mankind. You know, the heart of mankind is, is, is so depraved, it's like this, that mankind would rather go to hell and suffer a devil's hell for all eternity with no escape than worship the God of the Bible and forsake their sin. That's how wicked we are at the core. That's how we come into this world. Enemies of God. We hate the God of the Bible. We shake our fist at him daily and break his laws day after day and store up wrath for the day of wrath. But God can put you in your right mind. He can give you a new heart with new desires so that you love God instead of hating Him and you, so that you hate your sin. Do you hate your sin? Is your sin 
a burden to you or do you love your sin? See, Christians hate their sin. And all that sin that you carry about day after day, all that memory of all the wicked things that you've done throughout your life, that you carry about day after day, that burden that's intolerable can be taken off your back and placed upon the cross of Jesus Christ.